Now let's talk about chargers. After you go for a ride, you're going to need to recharge your motorcycle so that it's fresh and ready to go for next time. I've got a couple different battery chargers here to show you, but first let's talk about voltage and amperage. The same thing we've been talking about with the batteries, the motor, the controller, and the other parts of the motorcycle. With the charger, we still want to be matched to that same system voltage. So on this motorcycle, it's 48 volts. And although the charger is putting out more than 48 volts to charge, we still use that nominal rating. So uh, some of these other battery chargers here, they're not 48 volts, but I just have them here as a uh, example to show you a couple of different styles. Um, in terms of amperage, that's how much power the charger puts out to the batteries. Uh, this is important because that's, that's the rate, that's how fast we can recharge the motorcycle. And there's two things we have to keep in mind. We don't want, we don't want to charge too slow, but we also don't want to charge too fast either. And you also have to remember the difference between amps and amp hours. For example, uh, amp hours is a capacity. These batteries here are rated for 55 amp hours. Now, if we had a charger that only put out one amp, it would have to do that for 55 hours to fill a 55 amp hour battery. But who wants to charge a battery for over two days just to be able to go and ride it again? So we're gonna need a charger that charges faster than that. But at a certain point, uh, we're actually going to be charging the battery too fast. It's going to be creating heat and it's going to shorten the life of the battery. So we want something somewhere in the middle. And this is going to vary a bit depending on exactly which batteries you're using. So what you need to do here is take a look at the user manual and the specs of the batteries itself and check to see what it recommends for the rate of charging. And that's going to be the amp rating of your battery charger. Now, a short rule of thumb for this would just be the capacity of the battery divided by 10. And a simple reason for doing this is it means when you run the battery down, it's gonna take 10 hours to completely recharge. And we're, we're never gonna run the batteries down completely. That's, that's sort of battery abuse there. Um, so let's say you want to drive to work and while you're there, charge for eight hours and then come back home. Well, when you're using your battery capacity divided by 10, that makes all the math work out for you. Now, another thing we wanna talk about is whether your charger is on board or off board. Uh, for example, this is a nice compact charger. This one, not so much. It's heavier and bulkier. Uh, in the case of a smaller onboard charger, it can be permanently connected to the motorcycle and left there. That means no matter where you are at any time in any place, you can always plug in. With the offboard charger, that's going to be bolted to the wall in your garage or sit on a workbench, something like that. And then you're going to have a disconnect, which you will unplug before riding off. The downside to this is you can't charge when you're off somewhere else. On the other hand, maybe an offboard charger has a better amperage rating. Uh, it might be more affordable. Um, there's some other advantages to it there. Of course, you're going to need some sort of a quick disconnect. A good style for that is these 50 amp Anderson disconnects. Um, they're coded positive and negative. They're keyed so you can't accidentally plug it in with reverse polarity. Uh, these tend to be a pretty good way to go if you're using an off-board charger. If you're using the on-board charger, you just leave that permanently wired into the motorcycle. And then all you have to do is plug in and unplug an extension cord into the standard uh, power connector that's already on there. Uh, another neat feature about any chargers that's specifically designed for electric vehicle use is it'll have some other wires on here besides the, the power connectors. In the case of this one, it has a pair of wires that come off here that you can wire in as a disconnect for your vehicle. So when the charger is plugged in and charging, even if you turn your key on and you twist the throttle, you can't go anywhere. It's a, a, it's a, a safety to prevent you from riding off while you're plugged in. A more basic charger like this isn't going to have that, although it's fairly straightforward to build a device like that by yourself. Now, getting back to power, um, if we we're talking really big battery packs, you might want to consider uh, being able to use 240 volt power. But on the other hand, not everybody has that in your garage and you're probably not gonna have that in the parking lot of your work. So that's also going to limit uh, where and how you'll be able to charge. Now, this charger right here is rated for five amps. It's going to put out five amps right away when you plug it in and start charging. 
and over time as you're charging the amperage will lower as the voltage increases so that means for example if you're going to blow a fuse it's going to happen pretty soon after you plug in not at some mysterious later time However, this is really not going to draw all that much power because the motorcycle is only using a 48 volt system. And, you know, let's say this was 10 amps. That means it's only going to be 480 watts. Now, actually, we're drawing, um, we're using a little bit higher voltage for charging. It's going to be closer to 60 volts. So even a 10 amp charger at 48 volts is only going to be around 600 watts or so. Now I am rounding a little bit because uh, no charger is 100% efficient. You're going to lose a little bit there. So even if it's 700 watts, it's still not coming close to uh, the around 1800 watts that a 15 amp outlet is going to be able to provide. So we really don't have to worry too much in terms of um, blowing circuit breakers or needing super heavy duty outlets. 15 amp, serve, uh, 15 amp outlet is fine. We don't need a 20 amp. So for this charger right here, this is a five amp charger. It's fully automatic. Um, all you have to do is permanently wire it into the 48 volts of batteries, uh, plug this end into the wall, and it'll start charging for you. There's two lights down here that indicate uh, that there's power to the charger and also that it's charging, it's mostly charged or it's fully charged. Very straightforward. Now on the other end, we have the wires that go to the motorcycle. Um, Uh-oh, got a little problem here. Uh, I've got a brown wire and a blue wire. Now normally it would be red and black for positive and negative batteries, so this is a little confusing. So what you need to do is check the instruction manual that comes with it. Sometimes you might order a part and either it's American or European or Japanese. Color codes might be a little different than what you're used to. So check your instruction manual and when in doubt, you can always use your multimeter to check for polarity. So now what I'm gonna to need to do is uh, put some terminals on here. In this case, I'm going to use some ring terminals as these are going to be the appropriate style for going onto my batteries. Just need to make sure that it's the right size. So once those wires are stripped and you crimp those ring terminals on there, uh, then you just have to connect those onto the batteries on the far ends, the most positive and the most negative. Now, which do you connect where? Well, you connect the positive wire to the positive connection and the negative wire to the negative connection. Uh, it's very similar to if you're helping jumpstart somebody's car. You do like to like for charging. Now also keep in mind, this is a little bit smaller charger physically. So this is gonna be small enough to fit inside the gas tank or tank as I like to call it as there is no gasoline involved anymore. Since that's hollow, there's gonna be just enough room to mount that inside there. Uh, there aren't any really great mounting points on the case of this, but uh, some zip ties, Velcro, or pretty much any other kind of uh, uh, just a, a simple but solid way to fasten it's going to work okay. Uh, you may also want to position it in such a way that the indicator lights on here uh, are still visible from the outside as you'll be able to check uh, to see if the motorcycle's fully charged or not and that the charger is working properly. Now the one caveat here is you'll notice there's a fan built into this case. And if you look at these other chargers, they have some very large heat sinks. Because this is a power conversion device and it's not 100% efficient, it is going to be making some heat. That heat needs to be dissipated either through convection with uh, these large heat sink fins or forced with a fan. So I can mount this under the gas tank as long as I still have plenty of good ventilation down there. Now in this case, uh, there is some airflow when riding the motorcycle through the front, but when I'm parked for a charger, eh, you might want to double check that. Um, on this charger, I'm not too worried because it has a fan built in, but if I didn't have that, I may want to add a 12 volt computer fan that runs with the charger plugged in just to make sure we don't have any sort of heat buildup. Now, another kind of a fun thing we can do is we need to run an extension cord to this plug. Um, a simple way to do this would just be to zip tie the plug to the frame of the motorcycle, maybe coming right out from underneath the gas tank. Um, but another fun way to do it would be, since we no longer have gas in this tank, run the plug up 
through here so that when we're charging, the extension cord actually goes right into the gas cap. Now, you're also going to want to make sure that you use a good extension cord for charging. Now, in this case, we're not pulling a tremendous amount of electricity, but it's still a good idea to have a short extension cord, uh, preferably 25 feet or less, and that it's a thick cable. I like using a 12 gauge. So this is my electric vehicle charging cord right here. Um, it's short. It's nice and thick cable, double checking right here. This is a 12 gauge. And the other thing I like about it is it has a power indicator light that is built right into the end. So for example, if the motorcycle isn't charging, just with a quick look, I can see whether the circuit breaker has flipped or if it's a different problem, like say with the charger itself. So now with this plugged into the wall and the charger built into the motorcycle, all I'd have to do, bring this over, plug it in right there, and the motorcycle is going to start charging.